Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's episode, we're gonna talk all about these two new arcades that I picked up. Uh, right now I'm trying to work on replacing one of these half guns in this Area 51. Uh, it showed up broken, so luckily you can still buy these. They're readily available, but we'll work on that later. But I did wanna give you a quick little update of the game room before we go into the garage. So this is the Street Fighter II cabinet from episode one of Arcade Pickers. I'm really falling in love with it, so I don't think I'm gonna sell this one I think I'm gonna keep this one in my collection. I still have a couple things to do. Then we got this PGA Golf Tour Championship Edition cabinet, which I turned into a Silver Strike Golden Tee. I'm super stoked on that. We got this Area 51 Site 4. This is actually running Area 51 and uh, Maximum Force combo board. And then you guys have seen both of these cabinets before. But the latest edition, which I'm really pumped up about, is OutRun 2. It is by far one of my very favorite racing games. Okay, Kim learning to drift, round two. Go, baby! She's got this, I know it. Slam the brake and then slam the gas. But you gotta keep the brake down for a little while. Tell me when. Ready? Slam the brake. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. Did you did it? it, you did it! You did it! <laughs> I did it! You did it! I don't even know how I did that. All right guys, so we're out in the garage and these are the two arcades I picked up from Captain's Auctions. There's a Fast and the Furious. This is a Raw Thrills machine. This is actually a really cool game. And uh, it came at a really good price. Now it came at a really good price for a reason. Now if you're ever gonna do one of these auctions and stuff like that, you have to make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into. 2049, what do you guys say we're gonna do? What's it gonna be? 500, five and a half bid, five and a go, five and a round. What do you say, what do you wanna be? It didn't have a working CRT and supposedly it played blind. Now typically what playing blind means is you can hear the sounds, it'll register inputs and things like that. Now I'm doubtful that this actually did play blind because Oh wow, that monitor's tweaking out. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, the reason why I'm doubtful that this played blind is because the hard drive cable and the power cable of the hard drive were unplugged. So I don't think this actually did play blind. But after I plugged in the hard drive cable, I, did, I was able to get it to play. And like I said, the monitor was not working. So um, I swapped it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna repair the monitor chassis on the other monitor that was in here. That's what I think it was, is something wrong with the monitor chassis. But instead of diagnosing it right now, I happen to have an extra 27 inch CRT, so I just flipped it in there and it works. So I already have someone that's interested in this one. This wasn't one that I necessarily picked up for myself. I knew it was broken and I enjoy repairing them. So I'm getting this one up and running. I gotta clean it up though. This steering wheel, whatever this was, was nasty. Like there's, you could, you could make a pizza with the steering wheel. There's like greases and oils. It's just really disgusting. Okay. Okay, let's check out Fast and the Furious. Now this cabinet is a stand-up racer. A lot of people don't like, uh, they don't like these stand-up racers. I think the stand-up racers are really cool because if you're space limited, it's pretty awesome. Now I know a lot of people say, well, you don't stand up when you drive a car. Yeah, I get that, but these things are pretty affordable to pick up at auctions. So they make for a nice alternative if you want a racing game and you can't fit a sit down. Uh, the other thing that's cool about this cabinet, it has a subwoofer, so the cabinet is super loud. And the game itself, if you haven't played it, it's very heavily influenced by Midway games like, you know, Cruising Exotica, Cruising World, you double tap the gas, you can double tap the gas around corners and get them to go on two wheels. If I could, there we go, if I could stay on the track. Uh, because it's based on Fast and the Furious, you have Nitrous, which is pretty fun. Um, the, the cabinet's loud as hell. It has this pretty big soft uh, subwoofer in it. So definitely, you know, this, you can get this thing really loud. I'm, I'm in my neighborhood and I have the garage open, so I don't wanna, you know, blast my neighbors out of the park here. But yeah, it's a pretty fun game. It definitely reminds me of, um, of the Cruise and Exotica series, but way, way more, um, I don't know. Way more, it's faster. It's definitely a faster game than Cruising Exotica, in my opinion. Big fan of the Cruising series, even though uh, it seemed like the guys at Midway would always joke around about it being snooze in USA and all that, which I think is funny. But all right, let's see. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try to place. I usually come in like third at the end, so we're gonna see if I can pull off a, a second place or maybe even a first. But those of you that know me and know me with racing games, I choke at the end and then it's all over. But I'm not gonna do that today. I'm feeling it today. The force feedback steering wheel works really good. I'm surprised a lot of times that ends up breaking on these things, but it's working pretty well. Let's see if I can hit the nitrous at the end here and get a first place standing. Let's see. Come on, baby. Oh no! <laughs> 
told you, sixth place. I always choke at the end. If you're ever curious what the inside of one of these Fast and the Furious look like, it's just kind of a run-of-the-mill basic PC running Windows XP. Uh, there's some of the boards right there. There's an audio board, and I think there's a force feedback board. That's the force feedback motor right there. That's what that is. And um, the monitor's right up there, and the monitor is actually in good condition because I replaced it. Now, sometimes you find little goodies in these cabinets. The cool thing is it did come with the manual. Let me grab it down here. Oh, God. Okay, it did come with the manual and it came with a bunch of dead daddy long legs in there, which is pretty awesome. So the manual's there, that's cool. And then the other thing I found in here that was interesting is the recovery CDs. So that's kind of neat. I don't know. Um, and there's even like an upgrade disc. So this one, uh, it must have shipped with version 1106. And then there's a disc right here to upgrade. It's so gross. But yeah, there's a disc to upgrade it to 306, I guess. So I don't even know what version's running on this. I'll have to check that out. Okay, so that's this one. The other game, completely uneventful. It's called Crossfire Maximum Paintball. This game on like the Arcade Museum website has like a zero or something <laughs> for the rating. Like no one cares about this game. And I'm not trying to convince you that literally no one cares. It's a really crappy game. So anyways, I didn't buy it because of the game. I bought it because I really enjoy, I like the cabinet. The cabinet's really cool. There's some unique features of this cabinet. Like when you take the control panel off, there's this piece of acrylic here. And it's weird, right? You're probably wondering why the heck is there um, a fluorescent bulb right there? Well, the fluorescent bulb is there because it lights up this little strip. So this is really neat. So what I was thinking of doing is making this another shooting cabinet. So not this game, but maybe I have a couple I have a couple of um, PCBs laying around. I've got Lethal Enforcers. I've got an Area 51 Maximum Force. Come on! Stay low! Combo board. Um, you never see Lethal Enforcers in small cabinets, so it could be really cool. Um, there's a couple other options. I might put that Friction game in that. Like, that could be really neat. The game I showed you in my last video. So we'll see. It's really neat. It's got, like, the holsters right here. So I don't mind kind of deconstructing this cabinet and making it something else. I am going to put a real arcade board in it, but definitely not this paintball game. Uh, and the reason why this one doesn't work, the monitor seems to fire up, but the game board won't fire up and it looks like it's got a bad power supply. So I'm sure I could actually replace the power supply on this and get it up and running. And I may do that in the next episode just to show you guys that it works. Uh, and then I'll probably change it into something else. I think this is worthy of a conversion and the cabinet's actually in pretty good shape. So that's the update for now. If you look in the back, I got to get rid of some of these cabinets. I've got, I got to finish the Killer Instinct project. I've got the Thunderblade, which you saw in the last video. I've got a Neo Geo back there. There's a lot of cabinets that need to be, you know, cleaned up, restored, and sold off. So, you know, I'll, I'll give you guys updates on that soon. I'm a little backlogged in the next, the next Pickers episode's coming up. So I got to, I got to get these out of here at some point. But that's it guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the, to the channel, put your comments below, let me know what you thought about this, and that's it for now guys, we will see you on the next one.